John here guys and today we're talking about the T-Motor Falcon 15 micro drone. Now this is the newest micro drone on the block. As you can see it's shaped very much like a tiny whoop but make no mistake it is bigger. This is much closer to the size of the original baby hawk if you ever had held or saw one of those and it's very similar in weight although i would guess that this is heavier now part of that's going to be because this dome this shell which is made of some type of polycarbonate um, and it, it seems to be quite robust is going to add some weight um, these arm guards not so much now i do like the design of this um, it comes with a soft mount uh, already installed for your battery. It has a carbon fiber frame that looks to be about a mil and a half or so, which should be sufficient. These arm guards um, kind of bolt on so they could be easily removable. And you do have sort of a tiny whoop style camera, but with a mount that's much closer to your average full size drone. Now, this means since it is being held in there with some M2 screws and it has an actually built formed mount for it inside there, that you're not going to have those issues where your camera just comes jostling loose like on a lot of other micro drones um like the ur65 or snapper 7 where if you sneeze on them the camera's just going to go flying um, and bouncing around inside those pots now these are using t motors new um f15 motors they are 60 or a 6000 kv uh, which means that you're really meant to run this on 2s or 3s now i have done both of those i've run the 2s tattoo packs uh, which are 650 milliamp and i've also run this 3s uh, cnhl mini star um, 3s pack and uh, i can tell you that this is not going to be a screamer um, the performance is very close to that original baby hawk um, but add you know an, a, a bit of extra weight because of all this stuff now what you do get is a very awesome programmable led that is inside there now let's just plug this in very quickly and you can see the default color that this is set to is sort of a green and yes that's super annoying so i'm going to unplug this but you can actually go into Betaflight and change the color of this LED, I think, or there may be a, a physical switch on there. Um, you can change that color, uh, which is really, really cool. So if you had a bunch of friends that all had these, you could do races where it would be very easy to see who's flying where. And I think that's kind of the main goal of this. Everything is well protected, into, including your antennas um, in there. Uh, it also comes with this really cool case, this plastic case with a, a spot specially for this drone. It comes with some instructions, that little ID card comes with a strap and a little hex tool to be able to um, provide any service needed for this drone. Now, I, I don't have this on camera, but one thing that I really do appreciate about this quad is that it shipped with a connector with three wires for your receiver and that just plugs in on actually it's on this side right here now you, you see, i don't know if you can see through this clear canopy that there are two connectors that are plugged in right there now this one on the left plugs in for your receiver so the wires are already there so you don't have to go hunting down three wires like you do for a typical quad you just solder those three in my case i used an xm plus just put some heat shrink around it and let it sit in this pot in there and then it just plugs in. So you're only soldering up three wires for the entire installation um, and readiness for this. It already has an XT30 already, so you don't have to switch that over like you do for some of these other uh, micro quads that have JSTs. And uh, it's a little heavy for indoors though. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what the, what, the, what the goal is for this product. It's like a little bit slow for outdoors. It's a little bit heavy and fast for indoors. If they could have shaved 10 or 15 grams off of this, I really feel like it'd be almost perfect. Um, this is spinning the those two inch hulky props. And if you can see, they are right up on the edge of those prop guards um, and very close to this 
um, main pod in the middle. So you're not going to be able to fit a two and a half inch prop. This is a two inch only. Now two inch, I really had a lot of fun back in the day on two inch. Um, but I found that the ones that were the funnest were really, really lightweight. So does this have a place in today's market? Well, if you're still learning, I think this would be a great thing. If you like playing with the LEDs, you're definitely going to be able to see them outside. And because of the prop guards, you're not going to have to worry about catching you know your dog your cat your kids with a stray prop um so i really think this could be an awesome backyard flyer especially out in those evenings where it's starting to get dusk where the camera is going to still be able to see but our eyes are, are are getting you know they're adjusting to that light it's going to look really cool just glowing floating through the air and i love that you can adjust this to all of those different colors and if you look at the instruction manual that comes with it, I, I believe this tells you on how to switch um, everything to those colors. So it gives you the board layout, which is really cool. A lot of the instructions are in a different language. Uh, so that's interesting, <laughs> um, but very, very cool. It tells you kind of how to operate the VTX, which is pretty standard. It actually does not have instructions for the LED. So I know that this does have a programmable LED, but they don't send you the instructions on how to manipulate that. So that is slightly confusing. Now, I'm guessing with like a 10 second Google search, I could easily find that. So I'm not too worried about that. I'll show you some flight footage um, at $140. Uh, I don't know. You could get away with flying this inside your house if you have somewhat of a larger house like I do. If you're like in a small apartment, you're gonna be better off with some kind of a whoop. Um, just to be honest with you, I'm going to go ahead and show a picture of this compared to the snapper seven. So you can get an idea on the size difference and I'll put up the weights as well. Thanks guys. So here is the snapper seven next to the Falcon 15. And you, as you can see, it is much, much smaller, but what do you notice about the snapper seven? There is a motor missing and that's because these motors fail so frequently so i'm waiting for a replacement for that hopefully this was just an isolated issue i haven't had um, any issues with the other three motors but those are things that frequently do fail on these tiny um, brushless quads i believe it's because these motors don't have bearings and the wires are so thin i don't expect any type of failure on something like this i expect it to be much much more reliable just like the original baby hawk was for the most part if you're curious about weight um, of these things if you're planning on flying them you know close proximity or even inside your house without battery the snapper 7 is 27 grams and without battery the f15 is 80 grams so still um somewhat light uh it's lighter than most of your two and a half inch now if you were to take the prop guards off you'd probably lose another five grams or so so 80 grams with the prop guards and a strap so there you have it guys uh make your decisions on where you're gonna get thanks